Good evening. Welcome to the 14th annual Davidson Fellows Awards Ceremony. I'm Bob Davidson, co-founder of the Davidson Institute, along with my wife, Jan Davidson. And, and, Tracy, where are you? <laughs> oh, there you are. This is Tracy Mosner, uh, Davidson Fellows Program Manager, who does all the work necessary to make this thing happen each year. The Davidson Institute for Talent Development is a national nonprofit that supports profoundly gifted people. One of the ways we fulfill this mission, and only one way, uh, is through the Davidson Fellows Scholarship Program, which recognizes the extraordinary achievements of students 18 years old and younger. Tonight we will be celebrating this year's 20 Davidson Fellows. I would like to thank our congressional co-sponsors, Senator Harry Reid from my home state of Nevada and Senator Chuck Grassley from the state of Iowa, uh, who get this uh, arena for us each year. Uh, I'd also like to take a moment to recognize Annette Whittemore, who serves on the board of the Davidson Academy located on the campus of the University of Nevada. She's one of our directors. She's here with her granddaughter. Amy Levine, who was named the Davidson Fellow of, in 2009 in literature, is with us tonight. Amy, where are you? All right. She's here someplace. <laughs> I'd also like to thank the National Museum of the American Indian for allowing us to host our event here tonight in this beautiful space. Um, it's really quite spectacular, and we appreciate that a great deal. The decor and structure of this building reminds us of the open spaces of the West where we reside, especially Nevada, uh, where the Institute is headquartered. Tonight, we are celebrating the accomplishments of four Davidson Fellow laureates at the $50,000 level. Eight Davidson Fellows receiving $25,000 scholarships, and eight more students who are receiving $10,000 scholarships. Let me start with the $10,000 recipients. The first uh, fellow I'd like to introduce is Miss Sophia Bermonte. $10,000 from Fairfield, Connecticut, age 17. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sophia Bramante. I'm from Fairfield, Connecticut, where I attended Fairfield Ward High School. I'm now a first year student at the University of Delaware School of Engineering, where I major in mechanical engineering. Before I briefly describe my research, I'd like to take a moment to thank the Davidson Institute for this tremendous opportunity and recognition. I'll always remember that feeling of euphoria as I open the notification email in early July. My Davidson Fellow project in the category of engineering was entitled Fabrication of a Flexible, Tunable, Color-Changing Skin Using Magnetically Responsive FE304 Photonic Crystal Structures. In this research, I created superparamagnetic ferrite colloidal nanoclusters that cooperatively scatter light when placed in solution. Better said, when placed in solution, these nanoclusters cause the color of the liquid to change from native brown to any color within the visible spectrum red through blue simply with the tuning of a magnet. In my research, I was able to devise, to devise a way to synthesize these colloidal nanoclusters with improved response so that color change and mobility in solution would occur with dramatically less magnetic field. I was able to embed these uni unique photonic crystals into polydimethylsiloxane to create a magnetically tunable and flexible color changing thin film that can be used to camouflage our defense vehicles or offer color changing capabilities to consumer products. In addition, these improved magnetic, the imp sorry, the improved magnetic response of my nanoclusters will expand the biological application of these novel ferrite structures. Researchers have demonstrated that these nanoclusters can be used to carry chemotherapy drugs to cancer sites with remarkable success. Others have shown that the heat generated by induced magnetic motion of these nanoclusters when magnetically positioned at a malignancy can be used to dissolve the tumor. In both applications, the improved magnetic performance of my nanoclusters may allow physicians to position them with greater precision in cancer patients. 
As I mentioned earlier, I'm now enrolled in the Honors Program at the University of Delaware as a mechanical engineering student with an emphasis on biomechanical materials. I plan on using the generous Davidson Fellowship Scholarship to finance my education in the hopes of creating novel biocompatible nanocomposites for improved prosthetics devices. I'd like to take a moment to thank all those who are instrumental in providing me with the opportunity to chase my passion and conduct my research. First, I'd like to thank my mentor, Dr. Ronald Gordon of the Mount Sinai Medical School, for his advice in allowing me to spend countless hours on his SEM. I'd like to thank Dr. Penny Snetzinger at neighboring Sacred Heart University for providing me with lab space necessary for my work. I'd like to thank Dr. Yudong Yin at University of California, Riverside, for his encouragement and consultation during the initial moments of my work. I'd also like to thank my APUSH teacher, teacher, Ms. Margaret Murphy, who helped me persevere and articulate my thoughts like never before. Thanks again to the Davidson Institute. This recognition and Washington, D.C. experience with such talented young minds has been amazing and has provided me with friends for life. Finally, I'd like to thank my dad and mom for their never-ending support. I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, everyone. The next uh, winner of a scholarship is Smithri Kanaka. $10,000, Hillsdale, Hillsdale, Illinois, age 18. Good evening. My name is Smithy Kanaka, and I'm from Hinsdale, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Um, I am currently a freshman attending Columbia University, and I plan to major in chemistry and economics. During my high school years, I was fortunate enough to take part in the growing field of medical and cancer research investigating biomarkers. Biomarkers are molecules usually found in a patient's circulation that in abnormal levels indicate any sort of abnormality within the patient's body, such as a disease. My project specifically examined patient levels of HLA molecules, which are part of our immune surveillance system, as biomarkers of lung cancer. My project is titled, Detection of Soluble Human Histocompatibility Antigens in Circulation, Potential Biomarkers for Early Detection of Non-Small Cell lung, can lung Cancer. And the results of my project showed a promising significantly higher levels of HLA presence as the disease progressed. The driving long-term goal of this research is to eventually develop an improved way of detecting and diagnosing lung cancer through an expensive, non-invasive blood test looking for increased biomarker levels. Lung cancer is the number one cause for death among cancer-related deaths, with over 220,000 people losing their lives to this disease each year. Earlier and more accurate detection and diagnosis of this painful disease could really help doctors and patients come up with better and more effective treatment plans to increase their chances for survival and bring hope to so many unfortunate families. I have really valued this opportunity to take part in such important research, and I hope to continue my involvement in research throughout my undergraduate years and into graduate school. This scholarship will certainly help me in my higher education and continuing with my research experience. I am so grateful to the Davidson Committee for recognizing my work and for giving me this wonderful opportunity. I would like to thank my nominators, my teacher from high school, Mr. Mark Walschlager, as well as my research mentor, Dr. Jeff Borgia, for all his help, guidance, and support throughout my time in the lab. I would also like to thank my little brother, Varun, and my parents, especially my, bro my mother, Usha, for always encouraging me to aim as high as I can while keeping my feet firmly on the ground. Thank you so much.
Now we have Ms. Isabel Debray, $10,000, Los Angeles, California, age 18. Isabel. The UN's Refugee Agency just announced that the number of refugees worldwide has, for the first time, exceeded 50 million people. That daunting number can have a numbing effect. What does it even mean to be uprooted? How does the trauma of war and displacement impact a life? My research project, submitted in the outside the box category, sprung from such questions. Titled The Problem of Representation, Refugee Trauma in Postcolonial African Fiction, my project analyzes novels of the African diaspora to gain insight into the, psych the psyches of displaced individuals today and throughout history. I learned how literary perspectives, personal stories, and struggle, struggles of survival can capture the essence of what it means to be a refugee, lend meaning to depersonalized statistics, and cultivate empathy. With psychological work and literary theory, I sought to unravel the paradox of trauma fiction. If trauma paralyzes the victim and defies representation, how can it be narrated into a novel? In defining the stylistic and thematic techniques that refugee writers employ to articulate trauma and displacement, I sought to connect the external world that psychologists feel and observe with the internal world that refugees feel. Through my project, I delved into the nexus between literature and social justice, which continues to fascinate me and open up new avenues for research. Literature creates a mutually beneficial exchange between writer, often a survivor, and reader. The process of writing about traumatic experience facilitates healing, and readers become empathetic witnesses. The genre of ethical fiction, which I hope to study further, contributes to a public understanding of the psychosocial quandaries that haunt us all. I'd like to thank my parents and younger sister for their support. I would especially like to acknowledge my nominators, Professor Francoise Lyonnais, um, who is head of the UCLA African Studies Department, and Dr. Victor Ortiz, who is the research advisor at Marlboro School in Los Angeles, um, and who guided me through two years of research. Um, and I'm so grateful to the Davidson Institute for the scholarship, which I will use to help fund my college tuition at Brown University, where I'm currently a freshman with a prospective double concentration in literary arts and international relations, um, combining my exploration of global problems with creative expression. The famous philosopher Simone Weil once said, to be rooted is perhaps the most important and least recognized need of the human soul. With so many wandering souls in our midst, I hope to continue to cultivate a deeper understanding of this vulnerable and rapidly growing population. Thank you. Uh, now from Houston, Texas, age 18, Miss Tuyong Fi Lee. Good, good, good evening. My name is Le Dong Dong Fi, and I am from Houston, Texas. My project was titled Silence and Song, Revitalizing the Expatriate Vietnamese Identity Through Mythological Media. It was a literature category entry focusing on the worldwide diaspora of the Vietnamese people since the Vietnam War. I put together this collection of stories, poems, and essays to not only chart the experiences of Vietnamese immigrants, but also to make our unique and complex history more accessible to their children and grandchildren. By transcribing the stories of our people into one of our adopted languages, I hope to generate wider interest in our rich cultural past. In the future, I want to not only continue telling my own culture stories, but also to help tell the stories of other diasporic peoples. I hope to use the Davidson Fellowship to further research and write about this topic. Human movement has fascinated me since I was very young. 
it is often caused by strife and sorrow and causes strife and sorrow in its turn. But it also brings us in contact with people and places we might never have encountered otherwise, creating bonds and connections and synergy that leave us all the richer. I want to thank the Davidson Institute for honoring me with this amazing opportunity. I also want to thank my family, my parents for supporting me, my grandparents for being so generous with their stories and for awakening my interest in my heritage. Thank you to my three incredible mentors, Ann Nyes, Karen Evans, and Dr. Lynn Forrest Hill, who encouraged me, marked up my drafts, and devoted hours to discussing the finer points of writing and light. Thank you to all of the people, too many to name, who helped a nervous, stuttering girl find her voice. You all know who you are. I couldn't have made it here without you. Thank you. Age 17 from Irvine, California. Uh, Kevin Lee is our next recipient. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Kevin Lee, and I'm from Irvine, California. My mathematics project, titled Strongly Coupled Electromechanical Modeling of the Heart in Moving Domains Using the Phase Field Method, studied improving the efficiency and versatility of mathematical models of the heartbeat using partial differential equations. Abnormalities of the heart's rhythm cause millions of deaths every year, but exactly why and how this happens has remained unclear. Mathematical models have been essential to investigating these questions, but progress has largely been stalled for the past 50 years by the difficulty in incorporating the changing shape of the heart into these models. This difficulty forces the undesirable trade-off of creating a realistic model of the heart and a practical one. In my project, I reformulated the model of the heart as a fluid mechanics problem, which effectively resolved the efficiency issues caused by the changing shape, and I also created a fast and stable algorithm for simulating the model. I anticipate that my model can be used to uncover fundamental insights into the mechanisms of fatal heart conditions, as well as serve as a pipeline towards turning these new discoveries into improved therapies. I plan on using the Davidson Scholarship for my college education, after which I hope to pursue a career in biomedical research. I would like to thank Professor John Lohengrub and Dr. Esteban Mecca at the University of California, Irvine, for their guidance and mentorship over the past two years, and for agreeing to supervise a high school sophomore who wanted to study the heart, but didn't have much of a clearer idea than that. Uh, Ms. Shannon Bunch, Mr. David Knight, and Mr. Tim Smay at University High School for wonderful formative experiences in the science department over the past few years, my parents for driving me to college classes and lab every day, and for always being supportive, my sister for her honest advice, and the Davidson Institute for the recognition and support of all of our work. Thank you. Our next awardee is Mr. Mr. Michael Parsons from Long Hill, New Jersey at age 18. Michael. Hello, my name is Michael Parsons and I'm a composer from Long Hill, New Jersey. For my project in the field of music, which I called Composition as Architecture, I submitted five compositions that I wrote within the past two years. The pieces are stylistically diverse and span several genres including orchestral, chamber, and solo works. In the essays that accompanied the music, I meditated on my role as a composer in the 21st century and explored the process of creating organic and internally logical music. My ultimate goal as a composer is to write music that while intelligently thought out and meticulously crafted, ultimately carries an intuitive and emotional quality to it that will connect with and inspire audiences. I am so thankful to the Davidson Institute for their generous scholarship, which I will use to help pay for tuition at the Juilliard School, where I am currently a freshman. I would like to thank my composition teacher of the past four years, Ira Taxon, my mentors, John Kafer and Kyle Blaha, and my parents for all of their support. Thank you.
Next, we have Josh Wolf from Elk River, Minnesota, age 18. Hi. Uh, my project is entitled Shocking Lipid Production, Novel Lipid Exocytosis of Botrychococcus brani. The focus of my project was to create an efficient, efficient alternative to current methods of algae oil production for use in biofuel. My spark of innovation came when learning about how neurons in the brain release small biological packets of chemicals called vesicles many times a second. These same vesicle packages are present in most all algae and instead hold a relatively lightweight oil. I hypothesized that this process of neurons releasing neurotransmitters could be replicated in algae to quickly release its oil by replicating the same electrical, electrochemical environment in the neuron. I used low energy electricity to excite a group of proteins responsible for releasing these biological packets of oil from the algal cell. I was able to identify the energy requirement and exacerbate the natural biological process to generate a large yield of algae oil. After exciting the algae, the oil would simply rise to the top of the culture where I would collect it and cheaply convert the oil into a usable biodiesel. I plan to work on development of this process at, uh, for my patent at St. Olaf College where I am studying biology with the intent to go into research. The Davidson Fellowship Award will be used for helping me to pay for my tuition and foster my future progress. I would like to thank my two biggest mentors, Steve Ricotta and Mark Durand for their unwavering commitment to inspiring students to tinker and solve problems that matter. They embody the value of a quality education every day. Thank you. Uh, next, from San Francisco, California, Ms. Romy Yant. Hello, everyone. I am Romy Yant. I'm from San Francisco, California, and I am extremely thrilled and honored to be here today accepting this Davidson Fellowship. I received my fellowship in the category of music for my study of the Chinese instrument called the Gu Zheng, or the Chinese table harp. I've been playing the Gu Zheng ever since I was seven years old, and my project was a portfolio of pieces from both modern and ancient China, as well as an improvisational piece. The project was titled Music Without Borders, Transcending Cultural and Temporal Boundaries Through Gu Zheng Performance. Through my music, I hope to preserve the beautiful sounds of the Gu Zheng and introduce Chinese culture to the US. This bridging of the East and West is not only an important part of my identity, but also extremely relevant in today's world. I would like to thank my parents for all of their love and support, for helping me through my ups and downs, and for being by my side every step of the way, and also all of the car rides. I would also like to thank the rest of my family for their support, including my brother and partner in music, Raylan, who has been both a friendly competitor and an inspiration in my musical journey. I would like to thank my nominator, Ms. Susan Kennedy, for believing in my abilities and giving me guidance in my musicianship. Next, I would like to thank my music teacher, Ms. Gang Qing Zhao. The past decade of music study under her patience and dedication has been so wonderful, and I owe everything I know to her. And for that, I am forever grateful. Finally, I would like to thank Bob and Jan Davidson and the Davidson Institute for giving me and other young adults the opportunity to continue pursuing our dreams and making a difference. Ever since I was seven, I have taken my music lessons in a rundown music shop that doubles as an auto parts store. So this award really shows that no matter where you come from, with hard work and passion, you can achieve anything. By the way, they've upgraded to curtains now, so watch out. 
I am honored to be a Davidson Fellow, and with this scholarship, I will continue my artistic journey and share with as many people as possible the music that I love. Thank you. What Romy failed to mention is her competitive brother, who's here tonight, was also a Davidson Fellow. <laughs> On to this year's $25,000 recipients, the first of which is Eric Chen, San Diego, California, age 18. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Eric Chen and I am from San Diego, California. The title of my project is Computer-Aided Discovery of Novel Anti-Flu Drug Candidates to Fight Pandemics in the Category of Science. So flu is currently a very big threat and much bigger than many people will realize. A seasonal flu alone causes up to half a million deaths worldwide every year and new highly lethal flu strains could cause a pandemic any day, which would be far worse. Additionally, our current anti-flu treatments are insufficient, and there's an urgent need for new flu medicine. In my project, I was able to use an interdisciplinary approach, combining computational modeling with biological testing in order to speed up the discovery of new influenza inhibitors. By combining computer simulation and modeling with biological validation and crystallography, I was able to find new anti-flu drug leads to different flu targets that I'm hoping to develop into real flu medicine. Not only do these drug leads show promise in becoming real medicine and saving lives, but because they target different flu proteins, they also can be developed into a combination therapy. Additionally, a similar computer-aided approach can speed up the discovery of life-saving medicine for other diseases as well. I'd like to thank my mentors, Dr. Gunsheng Feng and Dr. Romy Amaro from UCSD, as well as Dr. Ian Wilson from the Scripps Research Institute, and all of my lab mates for offering uh, invaluable advice and troubleshooting help whenever my programs crashed. And for making the lab an amazing environment, uh, not only for learning, but also for having fun. I'd also like to thank all of my, par or my teachers and friends, as well as my parents, for their unwavering support and their willingness to listen to my thoughts and ideas. Finally, I'd like to thank the Davidson Institute for really giving us this opportunity and um, really this life-changing award. Thank you. Next, from Gaithersburg, Maryland, we have Neil DeVay. Thanks. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Neil DeVay, and I'm from Gaithersburg, Maryland. My research project in the category of science is entitled Early Cancer Diagnosis and Treatment Through the Detection of Circulating Tumor Cells Using Drop-Based Microfluidics. I completed this project in the summer of 2013 at the Harvard School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. In my project, I created a blood testing device for the early diagnosis of cancers. My technique combines both microfluidics technology and DNA amplification reactions for the quantitative detection and isolation of rare circulating tumor cells from the bloodstream. These cells dictate the spread of cancer, and this spread is responsible for a vast majority of cancer-related deaths. By isolating these cancer cells from the blood, characterization results could give tremendous insight into individualized treatment of the cancers. I'm truly honored to be selected as a Davidson Fellow and intend to use my scholarship towards my college education and possibly continuing biomedical research. I recently graduated from Montgomery Blair High School and am currently a freshman at Harvard College. I'm interested in studying both biology and economics. I would sincerely like to thank my parents for all their support my mentors, Dr. Huidan Zong and Dr. Srinivas Ganavaram for their guidance, and Professor David Waits for allowing a high schooler to work in his lab last summer. I would finally like to thank the Davidson Institute for this tremendous weekend and for the award. 
Thanks. Next from Portland, Oregon, at age 17, Ms. Valerie Ding. Valerie? Good evening, everyone. It is my great pleasure and honor to be here today. I'm Valerie Ding, a high school senior from the Catlin Gable School in Portland, Oregon. And I worked on engineering novel next generation multi-junction quantum dot solar panels using Monte Carlo based modeling. Let me put it this way. Each year, each and every year, we emit more than 30 billion tons of carbon dioxide just by generating electricity. Solar panels are a very promising solution to this problem but frankly, they are still twice as expensive as fossil fuels. So what I did to address this problem in my own way was to design new and novel solar panels and develop a method using quantum physics and computer modeling to determine which solar panels could be highest efficiency and lowest cost. This is the first step in what I hope will be many in my career and education and I used applied science and engineering to work towards world sustainability, which is a lifelong goal of, of mine. Um, I want to thank the David Institute, Davidson Institute for this life-changing scholarship, which will allow me to attend a research university and pursue my goals in education and a career as an engineer. I would like to thank my science research mentor, Dr. Veronica Ledoux, and my physics teacher, Mr. Bob Sauer, for rigorous daily feedback, instruction, guidance, encouragement, without which I could not have made it to this amazing level. I would also like to thank Dr. Bjorn Seipel at Solar World and Ms. Bonnie Raskin and the Caroline D. Bradley Scholarship, as well as my parents for daily guidance and support and encouragement. Thank you very much. Next, we have Alexandra LaGrasse from Douglastown, New York. Uh, hi, I'm Alex from New York City, and the title of my chemistry project was Using Ligands to Control the Growth Kinetics of Cadmium Selenide Clusters. Uh, in simple people terms, I used molecules attached to the surface of tetrahedral nanocrystals that emit light to control how fast they grow. And as these nanocrystals grow, they emit redder or lower energy light. So far, my research has been used in a larger study characterizing these clusters' properties, including the kinetics. However, the mathematical portion of my project fascinated me the most, so I will be using the scholarship to pay for studying computer science at MIT. Uh, I'd like to thank a few people for changing my life. First, to the Davidson Institute for introducing me to some of the coolest people I've ever met. And I'd like to thank my parents for supporting me in science from baking soda volcanoes to nuclear magnetic resonance. Then my teachers, Ms. Neme and Ms. Quintano, who taught me the background math and science that made interpreting the results possible. Uh, my research mentor and one of my close friends, Alex Beecher. He taught me how to be a chemist through his very patient guidance after Professor Owen agreed to let me, a 15-year-old, play with dangerous chemicals. And finally, the entire Owen lab, who was always there to offer training, support, nerdy jokes, and bad 90s music to make experiments more fun.
Next, we have Ritesh Raghavender from Kendall Park, New Jersey, age 17. Hello everyone, I'm Ritesh Raghavender from Kendall Park, New Jersey. For the past year, I've conducted research in the mathematical field of abstract algebra and representation theory, which study the symmetries of mathematical spaces. My project, titled Odd Dunkel Operators and Nilhaka Algebras, studied polynomials with variables that don't commute. So in other words, uh, AB is not BA, and you have to put your socks on before your shoes. Uh, this type of non-commutativity uh, is embodied through the cross product in magnetism and Heisenberg's uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics. I studied the properties of non-commutative symmetric polynomials and connected them to objects that arise in other areas of math. This translates into a better understanding of abstract algebra and has applications in studying quantum statistical models in theoretical physics. I am currently attending MIT where I plan to study math and computer science. Uh, I would like to thank my mentor, Dr. Alexander Ellis from the University of Oregon uh, for his consistent help and encouragement, as well as my research program, MIT Primes USA, for their encouragement. Uh, special thanks to Professor Etingoff and Kovanova from MIT, um, as well as Professors uh, Davis and Monks from Lehigh University for their inspiration and to my parents for their support and guidance and believing in me. And finally, a sincere thank you to the Davidson Institute for the scholarship and for believing in gifted education. Thank you. Next is Kenneth Shinazuka uh, from New York again, age 15. Hi, everyone. This is good. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Kenneth. I'm 15 years old and I'm from New York City. My technology project is titled Wearable Sensors a novel healthcare solution for the aging society. I'd like, to ask you all in the question, I'd like to ask you all in the audience a question. What's the fastest growing health threat to the United States? Heart disease, cancer, diabetes? The answer is actually none of the above. Every 67 seconds, someone in the United States develops Alzheimer's disease. Currently, there are over 5.2 million Alzheimer's patients in the United States alone, and caring for them costs the nation $220 billion in the year 2013. As the number of Alzheimer's patients is expected to quadruple four times by the year 2050, their care will become a significant burden to our society. My grandfather is one of those patients, and his frequent wandering out of bed at night has caused my family significant stress. My aunt, his primary caregiver, really struggled to stay awake at night to keep an eye on him, and even then, she often failed to catch him leaving the bed. Witnessing my family's struggles broke my heart and inspired me to find a solution. I decided to create a wearable sensor system that detects patients' as wanderings out of bed and alerts caregivers wirelessly at their smartphones. The system consists of three components, a pressure sensor, a circuit, and a smartphone app. The pressure sensor can be worn on the bottom of the patient's foot or embedded in a sock. Once the patient steps out of the bed, the pressure sensor detects an increase in pressure caused by body weight and wirelessly sends an audible alert to the caregiver's smartphone, waking him or her up. I've successfully tested the two prototypes I developed on my grandfather for nearly 10 months now, and so far they've brought peace of mind to my family. Encouraged by the results that I received, I'm now even more motivated to drive my technology into the marketplace to help the millions of wandering patients and their caregivers. I started beta testing my system in several residential care facilities over the summer, and I'm incorporating the feedback I received into the final design of my product. I'll never forget how deeply moved my, fam my entire family was when my device first caught my grandfather's wandering out of bed, 
At that point, I was really struck by the power of technology to change lives for the better. In the future, I will continue to work on sensor-based solutions to the, uh, to the challenges faced by our aging society. In the future, I hope to tread the border between neuroscience, computer science, and engineering to unlock the mysteries of the brain and to find cures to mental conditions like Alzheimer's disease. My ultimate goal is to eliminate the needs for my own invention. Finally, I'd like to thank the Davidson Institute for this incredible honor. In addition, I'm very uh, grateful for the support of my mentors, Dr. Alan Kaganov, Dr. Nick Alexopoulos, and Mr. Masato Mizuta. Without their guidance, I definitely couldn't have come this far. I want to thank my scoutmasters, Antonio Camacho and Lizette Perez, for their guidance, and Dr. Richard Livingston, who are in the audience with me tonight. Lastly, I am incredibly indebted to the help of my parents, who have nurtured my curiosity about science from a very young age. Thank you very much. Next is Alana Simon from New York, New York. Hello everyone, I'm Alana Simon. I'm from New York City. And the title of my project is New Diagnostics and Therapeutics for Pediatric Liver Cancer. Transcriptome and whole genome sequencing reveals oncogenes and novel chimeric protein kinase in 10 out of 10 patients. So when I was 12, I survived a rare pediatric liver cancer. And I was frustrated because no one knew much about this disease, and particularly no one knew what caused it. Um, there was no good treatment for it. So when I turned 16, I worked to gather tumor tissue samples from other patients around the country. And I started working in a research lab where, under the guidance of fantastic mentors, they helped me sequence the genome of these tumor cells and the adjacent normal cells. And this work ultimately revealed a previously unknown genetic mutation. And since this mutation was found in every single patient tested, and it was the only alteration consistently found, it is believed to cause this cancer. And although the title says 10 out of 10 patients, since then, those numbers have gone up exponentially. Um, and based on this finding, there are a lot of new exciting developments going on. Um, first of all, I'm hoping to create the first ever diagnostic test for this disease. Um, also, I've helped set up two nationwide clinical trials, which hopefully will eventually lead to a treatment or a cure for this. Um, so I'm extremely grateful for my Davidson Institute Fellowship money, and I plan to use that to pay for my tuition. Um, I'm currently a freshman at Harvard, where I plan on studying computer science. Um, and I'd like to thank, first of all, the person who's most responsible for my standing here today, um, Dr. Michael Aqualia of Memorial Sloan Kettering. Um, he was my surgeon, but he was also my mentor and great friend and has helped me through everything in life and this research project, and he's fantastic. Um, also, I'd like to thank my high school teachers for helping me learn to love science, particularly um, Jerry Francis Shelley, who was my nominator for this. Um, also, I'd like to thank my family for encouraging me always. Um, and also to the Davidsons, um, not only because they created this extremely generous scholarship, which is going to help me further my education, um, but also they helped start my education. They, their company wrote Math Blaster and Reading Blaster software that when I was little, I used to play with all the time and helped introduce me to the joys of math and reading and computers. So to everyone, I'm extremely grateful. So thank you. from Palo Alto, California, Emily Wong.
Good evening, my name is Emily Wong and I'm from Palo Alto, California. I'm a freshman at Harvard and I'm currently interested in studying biology and computer science. The title of my bioengineering project is Illuminating Disease Pathways, Developing Bright Fluorescent Proteins to Improve FRET Biosensing. For the past two years at Stanford's Department of Bioengineering, I developed two fluorescent proteins to visualize diseases at the molecular level, Clover-3 and Mruby-3. These proteins can be used to image neurons to investigate Alzheimer's, detect and track cancer growth, and uncover the gene expression behind different diseases. Clover-3 and Mruby-3 illuminate biological events in cells, which were formerly invisible. This way, we can advance our understanding of different illnesses and design more efficient therapies and medicine to improve human health. During my research, I often engineered proteins which were really dim or biosensors which were not sensitive enough. However, the rigorous trial and error process of my research taught me not only to persist, but to constantly try new strategies and come up with creative approaches. When confronting new obstacles, I will persevere with a bright attitude, one that might even outshine my fluorescent proteins. I would like to thank Dr. Jun Chu and Professor Michael Lin at Stanford University's Department of Bioengineering for their incredible guidance. Their passion for research, work ethic, and creativity inspires me to do the same. I also want to thank my family for their love, care, and support. And finally, I would like to thank the Davidson Institute for giving me this opportunity so that I can continue doing what I love most, creating things in order to improve lives. Thank you. And now we come to this year's $50,000 recipients. The first is Ravi Jagadeesan. Hello, I'm Ravi Jagadeesan, and I'm from Naperville, Illinois. My mathematics project was in number theory, entitled a new Galois invariant of descent d'enfant. A central problem in number theory is to understand the symmetries of the solutions of polynomial equations with rational coefficients, the so-called absolute Galois group of the rationals. I sought to study these symmetries in two different ways. Firstly, by their action on objects called descent d'enfant, and secondly, by their embedding into the Grothendieck Teichmuller group and was able to prove that certain previously known invariants for the action of the symmetries are weak. My work advances understanding of the mysterious relationship between different mathematical structures. I currently attend Harvard College, where I intend to major in mathematics and statistics. I would like to thank the Davidson family and the Davidson Institute for this scholarship, which I will use at Harvard. I intend to pursue a career in research, in mathematics, or in a related field. I would also like to thank my mentors, Akil Matthew and Professor Elkies, for guiding me in this research, and Professors Ettinghoff and Wickelgren for encouragement and several helpful discussions. Lastly, I would like to thank my grandparents for introducing me to mathematics, and Dr. Zuming Feng for helping me develop my interest in mathematics. There's another familiar name, uh, Sarah Cornfield Simpson. Good evening. 
My name is Sarah Kornfeld Simpson, and I am honored to be a Davidson Fellow. I am from San Diego, but I have just started my freshman year at Boston University, pursuing a dual degree in neuroscience and music. My scientific research project, Neuronal Nonlinear Dynamics from an Optical Illusion to Parkinson's Disease, was in the interdisciplinary field of biophysics. I created a flexible mathematical model of a neuron and applied it to a network of neurons to explain perception of an optical illusion. Not only did the model successfully capture neuron behavior during perception of the illusion, but it could also be extended to model neuron behavior during muscle tremors caused by Parkinson's disease, suggesting that this model might deepen our understanding of Parkinson's and other form of cognitive dysfunction. I am so grateful to be able to extend my research and pursue new research opportunities with my Davidson Scholarship. I would like to thank Bob and Jan Davidson for their incredible generosity and vision. I would also like to thank my science teachers, past and present, who have helped spark my love for science. Most of all, I would like to thank my family, my parents, Dr. Eve Kornfeld and Dr. Thomas Simpson, for their kindness, patience, and support and my sister, Anna Kornfeld Simpson, a 2010 Davidson Fellow, for being the best role model anyone could ask for. Before I conclude, I wanna share with you a memory that popped into my head earlier today. I always had an active, curious mind, and from a young age, I wanted to act on that. When I was in the first grade, I started doing these projects, not assigned by a teacher or anything, just because I thought they were fun. And so I guess you could call them investigative research for a first grader. I would read books and write summaries about the books, do some relevant coloring, and then do create a word search or a crossword puzzle. And I shared these projects with my classmates, and I thought that they would enjoy them as much as I did. I had so much fun making those word searches. I knew they were going to love them too. And they did at first. But by the third project, one boy raised his voice loudly and said, ugh, another one of these? And for the first time, I realized that my classmates didn't understand me and that being different didn't feel like such a good thing. Those words shook me, but they didn't define me. And those projects that I did, they still hang on the wall of my house to remind me of who I am, my active, curious mind, and my identity. And I want to thank the Davidson for this amazing affirmation of my identity, of all of our identities, and for shaping the way we move through the world. Thank you. Ray, you're next, Ray Ushikubu from Riverside, California, our youngest fellow this year at age 13. Hi, everyone. My name is Ray Ushikubu. I am 13 years old and from Riverside, California, a suburb of Los Angeles. It is a great honor to be at this award ceremony here at the Smithsonian Museum and to have the chance to meet all these wonderful Davidson Fellows. My project is called Circle of Life and Music. This is about the relationships between the people in the classical music field, including the performers, audiences, teachers, schools, and organizations. Throughout my musical education, I have received support from many individuals, and I would like to share my musical power with the world. I believe music has the power to motivate and provide encouragement, both through education and performances, and eventually make the world a happier place. I plan to use this scholarship to further my musical education and become the best classical musician I can be. 
Meeting the other fellows these past few days has been a really true inspiration. I plan to include these connections in my project going forward to expand the circle of life outside of just music. I would like to thank my piano teacher, Mr. Ori Shihor, my violin teachers, Mr. Robert Lipset and Ms. Danielle Bolen, my music manager, Ms. Laura Leopins, the Colburn School President, Mr. Sel Cardan, Mr. and Mrs. Adar for giving me the scholarship at Colburn Music of Academy, Mr. and Mrs. Cole, who are my big supporters, and of course, my tremendous parents. Finally, I owe a big thank you for Mrs. Jan Davidson and Mr. Bob Davidson, who started this phenomenal program, the Davidson Institute. Thank you very much. And now we have our final Davidson Fellow Scholarship winner this year at the $50,000 level, Ms. Alice Zai. everyone. My name is Alice Zai and I'm from La Cañada, California. My science project focuses on environmental science and it is titled Dependency of U.S. Hurricane Economic Loss on Maximum Wind Speed and Storm Size. For my project, I examine the dependence of hurricane economic loss on wind speed and storm size using 73 tropical cyclones that made landfall on the, in the U.S. from 1988 to 2012. Through a multivariate lease regression, least uh, multivariate least squares regression, I constructed a hurricane loss model that uses wind speed and size as predictors and found that storm size plays an important role in determining hurricane economic loss. Compared to traditional univariate regression models, my bivariate regression model yields more accurate loss estimates, which would be useful to insurance companies and disaster planning. This summer, I was an intern at Caltech working with Professor Yuck Young and considered storm duration and regional GDP, or gross domestic product, as predictors for hurricane loss. To further expand upon my project, I hope to apply my model to other natural disasters like um, typhoons to, or consider additional predictors for hurricane loss like precipitation or storm pathway. I plan to use all the scholarship money for my college tuition next year. After working on my research project, I have learned not only about hurricanes, but also how to communicate with professionals and think critically. To be recognized as a Davidson Fellow and see my work contribute to the scientific field is such an honor. So I would first like to thank the, the Davidson Institute for this great opportunity. I would also like to thank my nominators, Dr. Jonathan Jiang of Jet Proportion Laboratory and Dr. Li Xin Zhang for their guidance and valuable advice. I would also like to thank my science teacher, Ms. Compo, my high school, and my parents for their constant encouragement and motivating me to pursue my passions. Thank you. Congratulations to all you Davidson Fellows. We're very proud of you and what you have accomplished. As you move forward through your education and careers, we know you will continue to make a very positive difference for all of us. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge all the teachers, mentors, nominators here tonight, as well as the families of all our fellows. Thank you for everything you've done to support these marvelous young people. We are thrilled to recognize the 2014 Davidson Fellows, not only for their incredible projects, but also for the journey they have forged to reach this point. It hasn't been easy. Every year we are amazed by the depth 
and breadth of the fellows' accomplishments. With nurturing, gifted students will be among those who solve the world's most pressing problems. Thank you again for sh all of you for sharing this special evening with us. Good night.